In economics, we assume that people have unlimited wants for goods and services. The problem we face as a society, then, is how do we satisfy these infinite desires with scarce resources? This is the economic problem that can never be solved, but we try to satisfy as best we can. That's what economics is about, figuring out what should be produced, how to produce it, and who gets to benefit, meaning who gets to consume the output from that production. Our scarce resources can be categorized as the four factors of production. Land, which are raw materials like oil, coal, or iron ore. Labor, which is composed of the human workers and the skills they possess. Capital is any man-made input, like machinery. Finally, entrepreneurship represents the ability to combine the other factors of production to produce something in the hopes of making a profit. This is a simplified circular flow model of the economy. Households, the individuals and families that make up society and the economy, possess the four factors of production, as everyone falls into this group. As workers, households supply the labor to firms via the labor market, for which they receive wages in return. As landlords, they supply land to businesses and individuals, for which they receive rent. Households supply capital to firms by saving money in banks, which is then lent out to firms so they can invest. By foregoing consumption and devoting resources towards investment, the reward for households is interest. Finally, entrepreneurs are the people who take the risk to start businesses and are the ones who decide how the other factors of production are to be used. Their reward is profit. So, once firms have received the factors of production from the households, they use them to produce the goods and services, which households purchase with the rent, wages, interest, and profit they have earned by bringing the factors of production they control and have ownership over to the production process. This is why income is equal to the value of the goods and services produced, as well as to the value of the total household's expenditure, which is of course what firms use to pay households their income. You could start at any point in the diagram and think through the flow. Here, firms produce goods and services, which they sell to households in product markets. In this part of the process, households are playing the role of the consumer. Households can be consumers because they also possess the factors of production. They're able to satisfy their wants and needs because they earn income by exchanging the factors of production they have at their disposal with firms, which firms are willing to do because they need factors of production in order to make the goods and services to sell to households, and so on. Scarcity means we must make choices. When we devote resources towards making one thing, we cannot use those resources towards making something else. This is called opportunity cost. The opportunity cost of something is equal to the next best alternative to that thing foregone. For example, the opportunity cost of going to the cinema with friends is studying for an upcoming exam and the benefits that would accrue to you had you done that instead. From the government's point of view, they might encounter opportunity costs when deciding how to spend public funds. The opportunity cost of building a $100 million public university is $100 million hospital. Opportunity cost can be expressed on a production possibilities curve, or PPC. The PPC represents the combinations of two goods, or here, in this case, sets of goods, consumer goods being those you and I purchase, like shoes, vegetables, or sports equipment, and the other axis, capital goods, which are the goods used to make other goods, like combine harvesters, data centers, and the machine that puts a little plastic thing at the ends of shoelaces, when all factors of production are being used to their full potential. That means the combination of consumer goods and capital goods produced at point A is inefficient. There are unused factors of production being left idle, and or the factors of production are not being used to their full potential with given levels of technology. If idle resources, like unemployed people, become employed, we might move from point A to point B, which is on the PBC, meaning the economy is operating at full capacity. All factors of production are being used as efficiently as possible. Here is where we counter choice. If we want to produce more capital goods, we must now give up some consumer goods when we move from B to C. By reducing how many consumer goods we produce to make more capital goods, we can eventually produce more later on. By moving from B to C, we make less consumer goods and produce more equipment and machinery, which are less fun than consumer goods, but make us more productive. With more and improved capital goods, more of all kinds of goods can be made, which can be represented with an outward shift of the PPC. This outward shift of the PPC, however, takes time, which is the nature of investing. By giving up consumption now, we might be able to make more of everything later, here, at point D. Outward shifts of the PPC depict economic growth, and inward shifts, like the one here, depict economic decline. If a natural disaster took place, which would destroy land and capital stock, that means less of both kinds of goods could be produced than before the disaster. This kind of decline could also happen if capital weren't maintained and allowed to deteriorate. Increases and decreases in the quality and quantity of any of the factors of production expand and contract the PPC, which represents the total productive capacity of the economy.